Hello, my darlings. By the time I'm recording this intro, I uh, I'm still waiting for approval by my uh, by my mod Tana Berchan if the story is good or not. But I had a blast writing this one. <laughs> it's really funny to me. Yeah, this is my kind of humor in this story, but I hope you enjoy it. This is a Bakugo X reader fan fiction. Hope uh, it tickles your fancy. Uh, also, in the description, you will find my Discord, my Twitter, my Patreon, and uh, my merch store. It would be nice if you could check these out and support me with uh, some uh, monetary gains. Uh, but I would understand if you cannot pay for anything, which is fine. It is completely fine. Nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, in that case, I would simply just ask you to leave a comment down below, like and or dislike the video. It doesn't matter which one of these two you do. And uh, hit the subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate that. And if you think I'm worth it, hit the bell icon as well. Now please, enjoy the show. It was a setup. Go figure. He had been running with this group of villains for a few months now. They called themselves the Butcher Mafia. In reality, they were nothing but anarchists with a rather shallow end goal of simple death and destruction. It really was more terrorism than villainous fun. Their leader, uncreatively called the Butcher, had an interesting quirk though. Perfect for leveling entire buildings within minutes. So it was just your luck that a bank heist ended with him not only killing 20 people, but also with him and the rest of you getting caught. By none other than Ground Zero. Pro hero Bakugo Katsuki. It was funny to you how your ex boyfriend from high school was now the guy handcuffing you. Kinda kinky if the situation was different. And it became even more hilarious when you turned out to be the one interrogating you. The room was cold and really sterile. The neon lights glowing harshly down on you. You were still wearing your Butcher Mafia outfit, a nice black leather jacket with white, white pants and black military boots with spikes. While the butcher was a piece of shit, he had a good taste in clothing. The harsh light above you buzzed quietly and you couldn't put a finger on if it was a comforting rhythm or an infuriating one. So, Miss Marina, Katsugi growled. <laughs> yeah, that's my name, you said with a smug smile. Cut that crap! I would recognize those eyes anywhere! You chuckled. Your quirk allowed you to transform into any humanoid form you wanted. Be it male or female, black or white. It even changed your DNA and fingerprints. The only thing that was permanent between all transformations were your eyes, blood type and teeth. With a semi-annoyed sigh, you transformed back to your original form. You know me too well, lover boy. Stop acting smug, you killed 20 people! You never saw him this angry and disappointed. You'd be lying if you said that it didn't affect you. After all, you still had feelings for him. I, I didn't kill anyone. That was the big guy. You're lying. You sigh. You desperately wanted to keep up a cocky attitude, out of mere self-preservation. Baku, come on. Man, you, you know me. I'm very thorough. If I would kill someone, you wouldn't know. So the mere fact that there are 20 bodies that you can pin someone on... You chuckled. Then those are definitely not my bodies. A vein on Katsuki's forehead began to pulse. You knew from experience that this vein only pulsed when he was either really horny 
are really, really angry. Listen here, you sick fu- A heavy knock echoed from the door, effectively interrupting him. Katsuki raised a finger. Uh, excuse me. And he went to open the door. What happened next would be something you would still tell your grandkids. In the door frame stood a tiny man, roughly half an arm's length shorter than you, wearing a sleazy black suit and an old dusty top hat with some holes in it. Despite that, everyone was still able to see the receding hairline. And was wearing probably the most thickest glasses you had ever seen. And he brought in a smell that was something between cheap aftershave and cheeseburgers. The man was holding a giant bag in his arms and had his left foot raised. Clearly had knocked with his foot. Who the fuck are... Once again, Katsuki was interrupted. Ja, ja, immer gut with the horses, quivered the newcomer. Your smug smile turned into a relieved white grin. Morty, Mortimer, missed ya bad. Who is that? shouted Bakugo, more into the hallway leading to your interrogation room than anyone present. Mortimer didn't answer him and simply and quickly weaseled his way next to you, throwing the bag on the table. I am the secretary of this woman. He had a heavy German accent. My name is Hans Wolt, but the hero name is Mortimer. He opened the bag without looking at Katsuki once and pulled out a laptop and a really, really big file. As woman secretary, it is for me to inform you that she is to be kept in captivity until the trial of the butchers is completed and she can go back to her house. Bakugo's dumbfounded grimace was probably the greatest thing you had ever seen. It was obvious he couldn't decide between appearing professional or getting enraged more than he already was, or being completely drowned with curiosity. Mortimer already had a paper ready and was presenting it to Bakugo. Uh, please sign this NDA. If you break it, you will lose your hero license. Otherwise, you might as well leave the area so I can talk with my client. So curiosity it was. As quick as a snake, he ripped the paper out of Mortimer's hand and signed it with the pen the smaller man was presenting him. After Mortimer finished looking it over, he nodded, giving you approval to tell the entire story as quickly as possible. Basically, I was sent into the gang to set them up, but to do so, I needed to gain their trust, so I kinda needed to stick with them for a while. I mean, I was not gonna suck the butcher's dick to get VIP access to his private enterprise. Got the sick leather coat, though. Baku growled. So you're like a secret agent? Mortimer now jumped in. Yeah, the woman is my assigned agent. We are here from the UNDL. The United Nations Defense League? The global fucking military? You and Mortimer nodded in unison. We sent uh, agents like the woman into terrorist organizations to set them up. Twenty people died. More would have died if normal heroes and all the police would have handled it. Don't worry, Mr. Katsuki, this will cost the woman a promotion. You sighed. Oh, man, I really wanted that office job. The two men gave you a questioning look. What? Right now I was working for like two months non-stop and an office job would mean free weekends and more regular vacations. <laughs> so let me sum this up. My ex-girlfriend from high school became a member of the most prestigious military branch on the planet as a secret agent who dismantled threats of terrorism from the inside? Yes, and if you would have done your job better, Mr. Katsuki, you would have noticed the recording equipment on the woman's body. With a shit-eating grin, you pulled something hanging between your breasts. 
It was a tiny recording device filled with the juicy, juicy evidence. Bakugo looked like he was about to explode. As Mortimer proceeded to pull out various documents, Mark the Green declassified for him to quickly read through. There the entire operation, with transcripts of anything, were written down. His face turned from sour to soft as he chuckled. <laughs> you still draw little hearts over the eyes, I see. Yes, I had complained to her about that too. No, no, it's fine actually, I... It's kinda cute, answered Bakugo. After he finished reading, Mortimer smiled wildly. Good, das ist alles gut. <clears throat> I will now grab all this. It was nice talking with you two, but I have about 20 desk case letters to write, uh, plus the finishing article. Auf Wiedersehen. And with that, the gnome of a person vanished through the still open door. And through it shut, with a dramatic and loud bonk. Left in the room were you and your ex. So, like, what's gonna happen now? He asked you. Pooh, uh, I will stay in custody until the trial. Should not be longer than a few weeks. And I think then I'll take a vacation. You chuckled. Morty arranged me two months of nothing but lazy lowly gagging because he accidentally sent me back to Japan for this mission. The reason why this was an accident is... You paused and gave him a slight seductive look. That I could run into an old flame. Or a family member that could blow my cover. Bakugo chuckled. <laughs> I missed you, you know. And me, you. You scratched your head. Why did we break up again? You asked. He gave you a soft smile and sat back down on the chair in front of you. You had a secret project you absolutely, absolutely could not talk about and just ended it on the spot. Mom. Mom was heartbroken. She made me responsible. A cold shower washed over you. Were you feeling guilty? Well... At least you now know what the thing was. He nodded slowly. By the way, you began. I was busy acting like a complete psycho bitch for the past two months, and uh, so I didn't have time to look it up. Are you still number three hero? Bakoku looked away, anger growing within him. Yeah, he barked. You chuckled. <laughs> Smina, that's the number one. I'll slap you! You shook your head. No, you won't. Man, his girlfriend must have pushed him to the edge, huh? Yeah. The sadistic bitch, she's right behind me and I just know she hates that. He laughed and switched the subject. So, you're going on vacation? He asked with a cocky smile. That you returned by tilting your head to the side. What are you thinking? I'm thinking of us going on a tour around the world, testing the strength of various hotel and motel beds until your vacation is over. Your smile got even wider and you blushed a little. <laughs> and who pays for all that? He chuckled. You pay for the rubbers, I pay for the rooms, and we split the flight tickets. You gave a hearty laugh. <laughs> okay then, it's a date. Right after you told him that, the door opened. A policeman with cuffs was standing there with a questioning look. Uh, I'm here to get her into her holding cell, sir. Bakugo nodded. Now that you think about it, the neon buzzing was more annoying than comforting. 